The moment I stepped into my father-in-law's scrapyard in Albuquerque, New Mexico, this is an aerial view of that scrapyard. I felt as if I was inside a living, functional cell, the type of cell that makes up tissues and organs in your body. Now I was inspired by how similar this is to the work that I do. This was the moment that I realized I can step outside my laboratory. I have a new approach to understand my work. Specifically, I'm a cell biologist and a microscopist. And as an instructor in medicine, I teach undergraduates life sciences. My passion is to fully understand how cells work, because this determines how all creatures, including you, thrive and die. And I want to share the significance of cell biology with my students and my peers. One of my students created this graphic art. It demonstrates a true connection between the arts and the sciences. I believe a captivating graphic can stimulate the imagination. So I reached out to artists, and I asked them to illustrate my ideas about science and my work. And the process of communicating these ideas to people who have seemingly unrelated disciplines helped me understand my work more. Einstein said, if you can't explain your idea to a six-year-old, then you don't understand it yourself. <laughs> my work requires the expertise of using some of the most powerful microscopes in the world. This is a picture of a microscope similar to what I have in, in my laboratory. And this is a one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art microscope. It allows us to see up to 100 times magnification, and combined with modern technology and chemistry, we're able to visualize single molecules. Single molecules, I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> so I spend hours a day, many hours a day, in a dark room, looking through the oculars on a microscope, studying cells and what is inside them. And importantly, I enjoy doing this. So here's a simple example of what a microscope can do. There are three objects in this dish that are barely detectable using the naked eye. But if we use a microscope with 40 times magnification, we're able to see the objects in the dish in great detail. I focus intensely on understanding how molecules organize themselves. And I translate this, organiz this organization to disease. I work to understand how patterns of molecules result in disease. And what I notice is something called biosymmetry, which simply means patterns in nature. The persistence of these patterns is ubiquitous and sublime. And having written and published papers on organization, I began to see biosymmetry manifested outside the laboratory. I'd be at the market, shopping for vegetables, or out for a jog along the beautiful Charles River, or in my garden admiring flowers, and I see that nature has evolved and reproduced itself on many levels, in our plants, animals, trees, and in our skies. And as a result of these observations, I became even more motivated to explore patterns. My goal it was to become more open-minded, much more open-minded, to counteract the tunnel vision that can potentially coincide with looking through the oculars. So my solution was to reach out to artists, collaborate with them, explain them key concepts to see what they can come up with using their creativity, talent, and inspiration. I believe collaborations, let's say, between an, a historian and a physicist, or a musician and an engineer would be productive. Well, my collaboration with fine artists has resulted in the following works of art. My experience in that scrapyard in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where on a micro level, I'm studying cells looking through a microscope, and on a macro level, I'm standing in the desert as if I feel like I'm inside of a cell. This connection to me was really illuminating. So I wanted an image, something to reflect on, to help me think outside the cell or inside the cell. So I asked an artist to illustrate this. And this is, this is the art. So in the upper right-hand corner, in the scrapyard, there's a piece of machinery called a shredder. 
and it shreds metal. This is similar to what lysozymes do in cells. They shred unwanted material. And on the bottom of this art, these train cars are towing metal in and out of the scrapyard, similar to what vesicles do in cells, transport proteins and molecules around and in and out of a cell. I asked another artist to illustrate biosymmetry that we see on many levels in our world. This represents a mirrored biosymmetry. So on the molecular level, the geometrical configuration of a lattice of frozen water is similar to what you see in some viruses. And it's similar to what we find in nature in our honeycombs. And you can even find it in our skies in some constellations. And a different, con a different configuration, the spiral found in our own DNA double helix, is found in the horns of bighorn sheep. And it's also found in conch shells found on our beaches, and even in our cosmos, in our own Milky Way. So the next time you go to the market, take a look in the vegetable section and see if you can spot Romanesco. It also has that same spiral geometrical pattern. And it's delicious. <laughs> I asked another artist to illustrate how people may see biosymmetry on a micro and macro way, but in a different way. So here, dendritic cells and, tree, dendritic cells and neurons look like tree branches. So each of these four panels represent how neurons look like trees. And the perception of scale and structure is defined by our own experiences. For example, one may see these tree branches looking from the canopy down. Another may see it looking from the ground up. But all of these observations in nature have enriched my view of the world. One of my students asked me to further explain innate immunity which is how the body defends itself from pathogens or foreign invaders. And my favorite cell, the neutrophil, is a type of white blood cell that circulates in our bloodstream, waiting to be called upon to stop damage. So when the body is under a viral infection or attack from bacteria, or even as a result of a splinter, the neutrophil is the cell, the first one there to the scene for damage control. So I asked an artist to illustrate this concept. So here, the superhero <laughs> represents a neutrophil swimming amongst other blood cells, defending itself and its environment from a foreign invader. I use this piece of art as a teaching tool to initiate conversation, which naturally leads to questions being asked and in the end, everyone involved, we all have a better understanding of innate immunity. This last piece of art holds a special place in my heart because it was the first piece that I commissioned. It represents how the micro world is connected to the macro world. So in the micro world, we need a microscope to see DNA and cells and viruses. And it's connected to the macro world, which we need a telescope to see our planets and stars through the tree of life. And I use this art to explain to my young children how big but yet small our world is. The images and works of art that I've shown you here today are examples of how an artist can create a vision. And this has helped me stay open-minded. I've learned a way to boost my creativity, a way to think outside or inside the cell. And these imaginative and visual collaborations have formed a bridge of understanding, a symbiotic relationship between an artist and a scientist. Using fine artists to illustrate scientific ideas has made me a better communicator, a teacher, a scientist, and a thinker. And in a world where we are being asked to narrow our views, I believe we should branch out and collaborate with those who have seemingly unrelated disciplines. So I hope all of you here today leave with a greater feeling of interconnectedness, appreciating biosymmetry, and the patterns of life 
all around you.